All right, let's take a look here at the landscape of cloud service providers. This is generally broken down into tier one, tier two, tier three, but I've modified it to give each tier its own name as I don't like to think of them as rankings and more so that uh, these cloud service providers are specialized uh, for a particular thing. Um, and I've also added a fourth tier because you know the internet has always talked about three tiers, but there really is a fourth tier and I wanted to make sure we had uh, the full scope here included. So in the top tier, you're gonna recognize uh, some common names there, Amazon Web Service, Microsoft Azure, Google Cloud Platform, and Alibaba Cloud. In North America and Europe, uh, AWS, Azure, and GCP are known as the big three, um, but Alibaba Cloud is huge as well if you're in the Asia region, specifically China. So it's really just gonna be dependent on where you live, where uh, which are considered the most um, commonly known or popular. Uh, but we'll talk about that here in a moment. But the reason um, I call tier one top tier is that these are you know, very well-known providers. They're early, early to market. They have strong synergies between their services. Um, they're just really good cloud service providers. You cannot go wrong with uh, these providers. Then we have our tier two, or I would call our mid-tier. Uh, these are backed by really well-known tech companies, but I would just say that um, their ability to become top tier uh, did not work out the way they planned. So IBM at one point lo was looking to be a top tier provider, um, but they just did not keep up with um, AWS. And they just slipped into this mid tier and kind of specialized at least for a while into ML AI services. And now they're just more like very expensive um, enterprise uh, managed infrastructure for their existing uh, clientele. Oracle, um, very, very inexpensive. That's their play. They try to uh, be the cheapest, but their uh, service um, overall is not uh, fun to use. Interestingly enough, I believe Microsoft Azure was just signing a contract to use Oracle Cloud. So it's not unusual for some of these cloud service providers or these organizations to use other providers because they want to use their global infrastructure but uh, yeah, Oracle Cloud is uh, not doing that great. There are other ones in the uh, Asia region like uh, Hawaii Cloud and Tencent Cloud. I honestly don't know a whole lot about them, but they do show up on the Magic uh, Quadrant. So it's possible in the Asia region that these are the big three and uh, AWS, Azure and GCP do not play a larger role. But from our perspective, I put them into that mid tier because they just don't have global uh, awareness or global um, uh, market dominance like the other three uh, up there. Looking at the Alight tier, uh, these were traditionally virtual private servers, so they just specialized in that, and they turned to offer more core infrastructure service offerings. So we have a Vulture. I always thought it was pronounced Voltaire, but it's actually Vulture, DigitalOcean, and Akamai Connected Cloud, which was formerly known as Linoid or Linode. And so they merged their companies together. And I mean, they want to be like a cloud service providers, but they're very, very light in terms of their offering. So, um, you know, they'll have things like serverless and being able to run a Kubernetes cluster and some cloud storage and stuff, but they won't have things like um, the, the same level of event driven um, uh, metered billing or, or other kinds of uh, functionality that you, you come to expect in the top tiers. But, you know, if you're working with a smaller organization, they are a lot simpler to, uh, to utilize. So they are a great introduction to cloud for companies that find the top tier uh, too complex. And then looking at the fourth tier, I call this the private tier. This is uh, basically software that you can deploy onto your own uh, machines in your data centers to get the same kind of um, functionality that you would if you were using, let's say, AWS or any of these other providers. And, um, you know, previously I would put OpenStack into the mid tier because, in a sense, that it was kind of like a cloud service provider that was using uh, uh, quite a bit, but I didn't feel like it ha had good fit there. So that's why we made this a fourth tier. And we have a few different softwares. We have OpenStack, Apache CloudStack, those are both open source. And there's VMware vSphere. I have an asterisk there because. It's not really the same thing, but it is used a lot everywhere to manage a lot of uh, virtual machines. And so I, I kind of feel like it should fit in there, but that gives you kind of an idea of the landscape of cloud. And we'll see you in the next one.